What is up my friends? You are very welcome along to this Wolves preview here on Anfield Agenda. I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like an eternity since we last played a Premier League game. It feels like United have probably played three times since we played or something. Now I'm sure that that isn't the case, but it definitely does feel like a while, right? And I'm delighted that we're finally back to just focusing on the football. The window is closed, we know the squad that we have. But we also know we have some fresh injury concerns. So I'm going to go through it as always. Ask you for your opinion on my team selection and my score prediction in the comment section. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. All of our match day content, the build-ups, the post-match shows, everything has been brought to you with thanks to our friends at Circle. The football sweepstakes game where the winner is decided by events that happen live on the pitch and every single moment counts. If you would like to join us for our Circle for the Wolves game, which I believe is a three quid buy-in, you can do so by scanning the QR code on the top right-hand corner of this video. Or it's in the link in the description as well. So whichever one works best for you. You do have to be aged 18 plus and a UK resident to play along with us and it is a gambling product so we urge you to please gamble responsibly if you would like to get five pound and free bets when you deposit and place your first five pound in bets use the referral code anfield agenda all one word on sign up and that will get you sorted and begambleaware.org is there of course for all of your safer gambling tools right let's get stuck into it the news that we know is that Ibrahim Kanade has unfortunately been ruled out for two to three weeks with a hamstring injury. Uh, coupled with Virgil van Dijk being out, the centre-back pairing pretty much picks itself. So before I get stuck into the team selection, I'm just going to go with my score prediction first. And we are in a run of games now, five games and that we need to take at least 13 points from, in my opinion. We've got Wolves, we've got Newcastle away. Newcastle away without Bruno Gamares, by the way, which is great news for us. He got sent off, so three game ban for him and that will include the game against us and that five game run culminates with a home game against Manchester United which of course we need to win so for me in my head I've gone and hoped for four wins and I would accept a draw at St James's Park I'd rather a win of course I would but I take a draw and if we can somehow pull 13 points out of 15 and it's a big ask I think we'll be right back in that top four race so let's start off with the score prediction for this one what have I gone with I'm going for a 2-1 Liverpool win. We've already proven that we can go to Molyneux and win in recent weeks in the FA Cup. So there's no reason why we can't do it in the Premier League, right? Julian Lopetegui is a good manager, but let's be honest, we should be looking to go and beat Wolves. We should. Even in not the greatest of form, we should be able to do it. Now, I'd love to be able to see here we go 2-0 away victory clean sheet. But I'm not very confident of a clean sheet these days, and I'm sure you guys probably aren't as well. But I'll also take any win at this point, which is why I've gone with 2-1. So let's move in now to the centre-back and the goalkeeper, the easiest part of this video. Alisson Becker in goal, and it's going to be Joe Gomez and Joel Matip in the centre-back positions. It's either that or Nat Phillips, who of course probably has his own disappointment because a move to Galatasaray looked like it was on the cards for Nat before. Uh, Canada's injury meant Liverpool couldn't afford to lose another centre-back. So for me, this picks itself. Then we get into the fullback positions. And again, for me, this picks itself. I do understand the frustrations around Trent right now. And I've always been somebody who's been against the idea of Trent ever playing in midfield because I preferred him on the right. But I'm starting to come around to it a little bit. So maybe in the future, maybe Klopp will shake it up. I don't know. But as of right now, it's got to be Robbo and Trent for me. I don't think there's much debate around that. Trent, uh, he hasn't hit the heights with his assists and stuff that he has in recent seasons. But then again, the rest of the team have been falling off as well. So the uh, blame doesn't result squarely from him, in my opinion. It's, it's right throughout the team. Now we move into midfield. And this is where... I usually say it's tricky, right? This is the part where I usually say there are many options that we could go with, blah de blah blah But right now, the midfield kind of picks itself. Fabinho and Jordan Henderson have fallen off a cliff this season. Whether that's because of uh, fatigue, age, I don't know. I can't answer those questions. But it's uh, I don't think it's even arguable anymore that they aren't first team, straight away, down on the team sheet, playing week in and week out. No, they haven't. They haven't lived up to it. So for me, right now, as I said, the midfield picks itself. And that midfield should be, in my opinion, Bajic, Thiago. And I've gone with Elia for this one. And I've gone with Elia for this one because... Whatever I say, and I would probably play Naby Keita in there, Jurgen Klopp has played Harvey Elliott more than any other player, I believe, this season. So I do think he will stick Elliott in this team. 
if it's Elliot or if it's Thiago, or excuse me, Elliot or Keita, I'm okay with it. Either way, Keita has done enough recently to convince me that he should be in our starting midfield at this point with what we have available. And it is a bit ironic that Jurgen Klopp has full use of all of his midfield arsenal, if you want to use that phrase, right now. And yet we're still relying on an 18-year-old kid, somebody at the other end of their career in Thiago, and somebody who could be leaving in the summer in Keita. So I've thrown in Elliot here just to shake it up a little bit. So for me, bite shits Thiago and Elliot, but it could absolutely be Naby Keita in there as well. Now we move on to the other end of the pitch, and this is where I think we've been a bit confused as Liverpool fans. Jurgen Klopp has seemed obsessed with playing Cody Gakpo through the centre when we all know his best position is is most likely coming in off the left-hand side. That's where he's most comfortable. So I would like to see Cody Gakpo on the left-hand side and Mohamed Salah on the right. But I have to be honest, I am getting very, very close to dropping Mohamed Salah or hoping the clock drops him because no matter what we say, his form has dropped. His XG has dropped. He's underperforming his own XG. His scoring rate is half of what it was at this time last year. It just isn't good enough on any metric for Mohamed Salah. But I don't want to use him as a scapegoat either because his form has, of course, been impacted by the state of the team and how badly we've been playing. But either way, I do think he needs a little tap on the shoulder and a reminder that he isn't undroppable. So if he doesn't bang on in in this game or he doesn't put in a performance, I do think Jurgen Klopp could be perfectly within his rights to start thinking about dropping Mohamed Salah. And maybe that's where he moves Elliot onto the right side. I don't know. As of right now, needs must. And we kind of have to keep playing Salah. So Salah on the right, Cody Gakpo on the left. And of course... Come with your boy Darwin Nunes through the centre. I probably think that we'll see that the other way around. Maybe Nunes will be on the left and Gakpo will be through the middle. And I'm kind of okay with that because I do want to give Cody Gakpo a break. I think Cody Gakpo played very, very well in our last game against Brighton. Certainly the best performance he's had so far for us. And his defending from the front was apparent. It was there to see. And I understood what Jurgen Klopp was speaking about when he said that the signing of Gakpo, he had hoped, would help us defend from the front and would take some pressure off the midfield from that regard. And our defence, of course, as well. It uh, probably hasn't worked out, as Jurgen would have hoped, yet. Yeah. But I do, again, think that Cody Gakpo needs to be cut a lot of slack. Anybody who is writing this guy, or Darwin, off already, give your head a wobble. I don't know what planet you're on. For me, that is the 11. Alisson in goal, Trent at right back, Robbo at left back, Gomez and Matip as the centre-backs because of necessity more than anything else. I would play Elliot in this game because, you know, he's got good memories about scoring as well. Uh, in the FA Cup, he scored in the last two rounds of the FA Cup, hasn't he? He scored against Brighton, he scored against Wolves, and, well, we know we won't be carrying that over to the next round because we're out. So, yeah, I'd keep him in because he's probably got good memories of playing there. But if it's Kada, I'm fine with that. And then Salah on the right, Gakpo on the left, and Nunes to the centre. Over to you. Let me know what you guys think. And again, if you want to join us for the circle for this game, scan the QR code, top right corner, or use the link in the description. Thank you for your time. I'm very much looking forward to the Reds being back in action on Saturday. We will, of course, have a watch along of it on our Twitch channel starting from 2pm. You can also find the link for that in the description of this video. Much love, my friends. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.